Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. In case you missed it, I recently showed how the Quran says some extremely unreasonable, very ignorant, just plain dumb things about the world, like that the earth is a bed, that Allah spread the earth for humans, and that Allah also made the sky a ceiling for example, which is something very embarrassing that you probably shouldn't say around people who have a basic understanding of what the world looks like. Unfortunately, Allah is a very embarrassing God. All these very primitive and weird things that the Quran says about the world make people think, how could Muslims believe in Islam, in a religion which, which says such stupid things? Are Muslims collectively stupid? Well, not really. The answer is more complicated than that, but also quite simple actually. The problem is that most Muslims don't first learn these things and then believe in them, which is how it should actually work. It simply goes the other way around, in a very bad way. Muslims first believe in Islam, they grow up with it. They believe that everything it says is absolutely true, that it is the best book ever, that it's full of wisdom and free of any flaws. It's the perfect guide to all humankind. And then they never actually read the book. They say all those things without ever reading the Quran. When I show to people that the Quran says something ridiculous, like that Allah made the earth a bed and the sky a ceiling, a regular Muslim who hears that actually hears about that for the first time. And then the average Muslim doesn't know how to respond to that. That's why Muslims so frequently come with these standard responses, like, you are using the wrong translation, you idiot, die in hell. You make up your own Quran verses. That is not in the Quran. I hope you die in the street like a hungry dog. It doesn't say that, you liar. May Allah burn you in hell forever because that is what you deserve. Muslims usually give these standard responses not because they are habitual liars who are taught by their religion or trained by their religion to lie. They respond this way because they don't know how to deal with the fact that an obviously authentic text from the Quran that they believe in actually says something so ludicrous. They can't believe that this fantastic book which their parents and their local imam told them was absolutely true and the best book ever actually says something so dumb. The only response that they can momentarily give to that is disbelief and the assertion that I must be lying or making this up or taking it out of context or not showing the full Quran verse or that I must be sick into doing this for money or Israel or America and that I'm actually a secret Zionist with an agenda. Suddenly it goes there and all that happens because it must be me. It can't be the Quran that is wrong. The Quran is amazing. It was revealed by the Almighty Allah. And it says at the very beginning that everything it says is true and that you will be tortured in the worst ways possible forever if you don't believe that. And that the disbelievers are liars who are all against you, who are the enemy of Allah. It is a commonly known fact among Muslims that most Muslims have actually never read the Quran in a language that they understand. When you see a Muslim online who tells you about how the Quran is full of wisdom and free of any mistakes, you can safely assume that this person has probably never read the Quran. Reading the Quran in your own language is not a thing among Muslims. And the vast majority of Muslims don't speak Arabic, the language of the Quran. Arabic speakers are only 15% of the Muslim population and those who do speak modern Arabic and its various dialects don't truly understand the archaic, impractical, classical Arabic of the Quran. It sounds old and complicated and many words are unfamiliar. And now among those 15% or less of Muslims who actually speak Arabic, the vast majority has again never really read the Quran, only listened to parts of it or read parts of it. Turks, Pakistanis, Indonesians, Bosnians, Malaysians and all the others only read specific parts of the Quran for ritualistic purposes, for prayers in Arabic. Very few, maybe less than 5% of those Muslims read the Quran in Arabic and there is a very tiny, invisible fraction of that Muslim population that has actually sat down and read a proper translation of the Quran. That is extremely rare. It is considered sacred and very valuable to read the entire Quran in Arabic, which some people do, most of them non-Arabic speakers. When it comes to actual knowledge in the Quran, it is a popular opinion among Muslims that you shouldn't read a translation of the Quran. 
especially not by yourself, but rather consult scholars if you truly want to know what the Quran says. That's why Muslims so often say, oh, go ask a scholar, or you need to consult a scholar. Most of what Muslims know of the Quran consists of popular chapters and often repeated verses that are only a very small part of the Quran. Much of what Muslims claim to know about the Quran simply consists of hearsay and what they've learned from their elders and scholars. Which is ironic because most Muslim households have at least one Quran at home, which no one ever bothers to sit down and properly study. As a result, someone who is now confronted with extremely incoherent and very primitive things like Allah made the earth a bed and the sky a ceiling without visible pillars, and he sends down water from the sky and makes vegetables grow so you may eat it, and he planted mountains into the earth so it may not shake, and the moon follows the sun, which the day reveals, which is covered by the night, is completely dumbfounded and left with a few options. Option number one, wow. This really sounds very stupid and clearly like 7th century desert drivel. Maybe I should rethink my beliefs. Option 2. What this says is actually true and I'll be loyal to the Quran. Option 3. It doesn't actually mean that. You're just misunderstanding it. What it actually means is beyond your comprehension. You need to ask a scholar. The Quran is wonderful. It's a miracle. It is so perfect. Option number four, you liar, burn in hell. I wonder if there's a thing like uh, Muslim ASMR. Oh my God, there is. What the, that is haram. <laughs> I will like this video. Anyway, <laughs> most Muslims stick to staying loyal to the Quran or being in complete denial. Not because they are stupid, but because they were indoctrinated and filled with fear and anger from very early childhood, often by authoritarian parents and often tyrannical Islamic teachers of a religion that is built on cruelty and authoritarianism, where you're not supposed to ask questions. You can't just show a Muslim the facts and then expect them to simply change their mind. Islam is very strong in destroying logic and reason with fear. But showing more sources and reasoning more are definitely good steps into the right direction. I was afraid too. I was shocked to find out that my religion, which I learned from very early childhood was perfect, was actually full of crap. Believe me, it took a lot to get through that questioning. The path out of fear and indoctrination is very hard and very scary. But in the end, I'm very glad that I went through it. Muslims are not stupid. No one is stupid by their religion and group. We are all just humans. And a Muslim just needs to be exposed to information. Just like all of us need to be exposed to more and more information. So that we don't fall for dangerous lies that do not only harm others, but most importantly ourselves. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why enlightenment is so important. And honestly, I just love doing this. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. Most of my videos are not monetized. If you want to support me and my cause, you can support me on Patreon or on apostateprofit.com. I appreciate all your help so much. I will be back with so much more. For now, have a great day and stay away from Islam.